Hey guys, this is Ms. Burnett. Um, I just wanted to share with you a video or two that um, I think would help you if you were to need it for next year. Um, we're going to do some poetry together. I know it's probably not your most favorite, but anyway, we're going to go over something together and dig deeper into the questions and see if we can't um, make some of this a little bit easier. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying your summer. You've had a, a safe summer so far, a, an extended summer. Enjoy time at home with your family, uh, friends, whatever you might be doing. Uh, maybe even trying to get out and take a little vacation or something. But um, let's read this passage together and see if we can dig a little deeper inside it, okay? All right, the one I want us to read together right here is called What My Father Said by Alan King. Um, this is just like one of our normal passages that we read in class. Um, it's just got a couple of stanzas. You can see the lines are numbered. And uh, you see at the beginning, it tells you something about the passage before you get started. Please make sure to always take a chance and uh, I mean a moment and read this. Okay, it's usually very helpful. It says, Alan King is a Caribbean American. American, whose parents immigrated from Trinidad and Tobago to the U.S. In this poem, a boy wants to play with his friends, but is put to work by his dad. As you read, take notes on how the speaker feels about his dad. Okay, so we're going to be stopping after every couple of stanzas and talking about how the speaker feels about his dad. Okay, we know all the different feelings we could possibly have. It was the day I helped dad clean out the shed when Sly J. Bird and Rashad darted our fence and still painting said they need a fullback for our neighborhood link all right you see fullback has a footnote there and if we scroll down most of you probably know what a fullback is it says that a fullback is an offensive player for football okay so they said they needed someone to help in their football league okay and most of you guys if somebody offered for you to come play football with them you would probably go and that's what he would want to do right now but he's helping his dad. All right, going on to stanza number two. So back then, with snack, eat open turf. Uniforms were street clothes. Our parents bought the year before. It was a Saturday of our fantasy playoffs. Two teams of teams whose lack of coordination meant the ball slipped through the shaky hands, like our chances of making school squad. This is we dream of screaming stadiums, cheerleaders boogieing their beautiful bodies, fans stopping the st stomping the stands every time one of us goes towards the end zone. We were at the age when bragging rights shine brighter than Super Bowl rings. They asked if I could kick up the field with them. I frizzled when Dad said, no, he's busy. That was Saturday. Miss Brown walked to Rose Bush and Mr. Graham set sprinklers in the lawn that looked like AstroTurf. All right. All right, so let's stop there for just a minute. They asked him to come play football. He didn't get a chance to answer, but his dad spoke up and said, what? He said, no, he's busy. Okay, he's busy working. So busy working over going to play football. What kind of feelings would you have towards your dad right there? You're going to be happy that you're working? Or had you rather be going to play football? I think you would probably rather be playing football right now. All right, let's keep going. So that was the day I heard my boys laugh two yards over, yelling, touchdown. All right, so they, they went on and they played without him, okay? And he could hear them yelling, touchdown. Think about your feelings that would go through your head, boys or girls. If, if you could be playing, doing something fun. But Dad said, no, you have to work. All right, on to the next stanza. So I went back in the shed to help Dad with a spool of fat cables. Before I saw, <clears throat> excuse me, a black pillow of smoke. Over the shed, before Mr. Mr. Graham called, out, called us out to see a planted torch blazing near the two struck matches. I watched Lot and Jaber break under the suns and rocketed blaze. I watched angry fingers and blame one another. I watched grateful dad say no. That accusations weren't huddled over me. Screaming, why are you lying? You know you set that fire. All right, so these boys playing football. The speaker was helping his dad, and what happened? Okay, 
if we go back and look right here, it's a black billow of smoke. Black billow of smoke means something's on fire, right? All right, so it says Sly and Jaybird break under the sun's interrogative gaze. Okay, they break. break. Their break means that they're running. Okay, and as they're running here, they're running away. And so they saw angry fingers aim at one another. What most of us want to do whenever we're in trouble, right? We want to blame one another, saying that it wasn't us. But then we think. Next, I want you to look and see what Dad said. Change the color on this. It says, I watch Grateful Dad. Grateful Dad. Hmm. What does Grateful mean? It says, I watch Grateful Dad. Said no. Accusations were all over him. So an adult speaks up and says no, that it wasn't you. Do most people believe you? Yeah, probably so, right? So it's probably going to be one of those two boys. It's going to be Sly or Jaybird, one that had to set that um, set the fire. So let's keep going. Still not quite finished. It says I lay in the grass watching my, my friend's parents with them. Rashad cried loud enough to scatter birds from the lamppost. That's when I ran home. All right. Parents with the kids. Probably doesn't happen much now. Some people still get a whipping. I got a whipping when I was growing up. I got a whipping. And what happened to the boy? Nothing, right? He didn't get to go play, so we know that he did not set the fire. All right, now let's scroll down here and let's go answer our questions together. It says... Which statement expresses the main theme of the poem? Okay. Main theme of the poem. What that poem is going to be mainly about. Okay. Um, and we know the theme is a message. It's what can be learned from a poem. Okay. Now remember, it can't just apply to one person. It would have to probably apply to everyone. Okay. So let's look at our answer choice. It says, working hard is more important than playing with friends. Well, that was it. Stressing the importance of actually working hard. Do we know that this boy was working hard? I don't know. B says it can be dangerous to be careless. Probably true as well. Friends often turn on each other during conflict. Did Sly and Japer turn on each other? Yep. I think they probably did there at the end. It says parents often know best, even when we think that they don't. All right. Now, I think all these are possible be true at some point in time okay they're good themes but we have to pick out a main theme for this poem that we are reading and the theme needs to be true for throughout the entire poem okay if we're getting that one that's true for the entire poem the answer on this one's going to be d that parents often know best even when we think that they don't it can be dangerous to be careless well we don't know the story about them being Dangerous and careless. Okay, that really wasn't expressed in the story, so it could be. See, his friends often turn on each other during conflict. They did, but remember that only happened like in one stanza. It wasn't throughout most of the poem, so it couldn't be C. And A, we already talked about that. This is working hard. It's more important than playing with friends. It didn't stress the importance of working hard. It just said that um, he was working with his dad because his dad did not. Let him go play with friends. All right. So since we know the answer to number one is D, let's go ahead and do part B on number two. We need to find a detail from the poem to support the answer. Okay. So as we scroll back up there, we need to find something that shows us that parents know best, even when we think that they don't. Okay. If we look at these lines, since we were at the age when bragging rights shine brighter than Super Bowl rings, B. He says, I went back inside the shed to help Dad move a spool of fat cables. See, he says, I watched Grateful Dad. I said, no. The accusations weren't huddled over me. And D says, that's why you lying. You know, you set that fire. Now, remember, we're trying to match. Parents often know best. Okay? Um, we're in there with something that, or someone saying that Dad knew best. He's said what because he said look back at c it says i watched grateful dad said no 
the accusations weren't huddled over me. Okay. Dad knew best. Then that ended up happening, and this boy was able to stay out of trouble because his dad said no. So this would be lines 38 and 39, and C would be the correct answer there. All right. Let's scroll down. Uh, uh, let's do number three. It says, what does it mean that the speaker frizzled in line 22? Okay, unless you already just know what frizzle means, then I think we need to look back up there at line 22, okay? There Remember, it's not hard to find, so please always look back to the line where it tells you the word is used. We're going to scroll back, back up. All right. And there's 20, 21, and 22. It says, I frizzled when Dad said no. Oh, he's busy. No, what do you think about that? How would we feel in a normal kid's situation? I frizzled when Dad said no. He's busy. I what? What are the feelings that he's trying to get across to us when he uses the word frizzled? Because we don't use the word frizzled very much, or I don't. So let's go down to their answer choices. So the friends ask him if they can come play. Says, I frizzled. When dad said, no, he's easy. All right. He is upset that he can't join his friends. He is overheating from all his hard work. He is embarrassed by his father's words. Or he is shocked by his father's words. Well, he might be a lot of those. I think we probably take one of them out right now. And we can take out B. I don't think he was overheating from all his hard works. So let's take that one out. Um, now, most time we aren't too shocked by what our parents say. We always sense something dad might come along if they just think we should. Now, we get down to he is upset that he can't join his friends or he is embarrassed by his father's words. Okay? Okay. Set and embarrassed. And on those two there, embarrassed might show a different action there where maybe he goes back inside or kind of stands behind someone or looks away. And it doesn't really mention that, that he does anything of this nature. You know, if you're upset, you might say something. Maybe he doesn't work hard. Maybe he does things later. You know, and we don't know what him and dad are doing other than working together. And this one, frizzled means upset. Okay. And I think as a whole, that's what most of you would be. If you couldn't go with your friends, you would just be upset. You know, wishing that you could have just gone with your friends to play football. All right, let's go to part B. We know that this one is A. I'm going to highlight this. And number four, which quote from the text best supports the answer to part A? Okay. okay. So we know that this one means that he's upset. I need a line from the poem that would show that he's upset about it, okay? So let's look and find one. A says they ask if they could kick the field with them. They ask if I could kick the field with them. Well, that's just them asking, right? That's not showing any types of emotions, whether he, that he cannot go. B says that was a Saturday Miss Brown watched a rosebush. Does that show any feelings? Not necessarily. So let's go take that one out. Okay, we've already gotten it down to two just by reading them once. C. Says so that was the day I heard my boys laugh two yards over, yelling, touchdown. Now remember, we talked about this earlier. When people yell things from far away after you can't do something. What were your feelings then? Were you embarrassed then that you could play when they were far away, or were you more upset that you weren't over there playing? All right, that matches. It's upset. But again, we always interview the rest of our answers. D says, before I saw black smoke, before I saw black billows of smoke over the shed before Miss Brown. All right. Is that going to make you feel upset or embarrassed? That will be the one, right? Because that's just going to make you wonder what's going on. So I think we could take this one out too. And definitely C would be the correct answer for number four. Okay. Again, that it wasn't too hard. The text wasn't too long. Poems really aren't that long when we're asked to read them. But we need to sit down and think about them. Okay, look back at words we don't know. Use our footnotes. And again, stop it and think about what the question asked us at the beginning. How did the speaker feel about his dad? Okay, he wasn't at first. I think he didn't get to go. Well, maybe at the end there was some 
Then go back to the get the girls, he didn't get in trouble. You know, no one wants to beat from their parents. I don't think their kids did either, but that's what happened because they set fire to something. All right, guys, I hope y'all have a great summer and get a chance to read a little poetry, maybe even finish up um, the book that we're reading in class, The Outsiders, and the next chapter was a poem. So y'all have a good day, okay?